Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful end of the weekend. It is Sunday, December 3rd, 2023. It's about 11.37 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 3.5 earthquake. Uh, this following, uh, I believe, a 5.1 that just came into this area. Either way, quite the amount of earthquake activity continuing around the Philippines area. I'm going to get to all this here in just a minute. Want to cover some activity that's stirring up tonight in the Space Weather Department once again. Looking at a potential G2 class storm coming in. This is from a, a glancing blow from a CME, but also a coronal hole that has been facing us over the past few days. We'll finally arrive later this evening. We're looking at expected G2 class storming conditions around 600 UTC time. That's about 10 o'clock my time, 10 o'clock Pacific. And of course, later, if you're out in the eastern areas of the country, that could persist throughout the night, according to the Space Weather Prediction Center. Uh, so if you're up and about and you have clear skies, get out there and see what you can see. Uh, here's one of the weather models right here. We got the coronal hole stream uh, from this area right here, finally reaching us, along with a little clipper CME, uh, CME event uh, that could amplify slightly some of the conditions but most of this activity elevated plasma and speed will be due to the coronal hole that has been facing us uh, over the past few days let's go ahead and look at the latest uh, website here solarham.net this is the current position of the coronal hole notice that it is much further to the western limb of the sun it does take about 48 to 72 hours depending on the uh, speed here that the solar wind stream is flowing out for it to arrive and affect this planet so uh tonight good possibility we should see uh we could see g2 class storming once again that could mean what elevated earthquake activity let's watch this and see how this plays out we definitely were hit with a g3 storm here a couple a uh, few nights ago and goodness we've seen uh, earthquake activity really ramp up a uh, real quick glance here at the magnetogram this is the solar disk the earth facing side of the sun showing us well not a whole lot of sunspots out here there may be a few but they are pretty stable not a whole lot of complexity within any of these uh, cores of the sunspots so unfortunately the solar flare threat will be going down and it looks like uh, right now 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 30 x flare eh, i don't think it's five percent but okay so watch for that G2 storm later tonight. All right, earthquake activity. Goodness. <laughs> the Philippines has been rocking and rolling like crazy, folks. I'm not even joking. This is here in the last 24 hours. Um, the USGS here showing about oh, 4.0 and above. I believe that's what they're covering. Maybe even 4.5. Oh, they're covering 4.0. Uh, and this does not include all of the events. This is just in the last 24 hours. 83 earthquakes. So uh, this is, uh, looks like a 6.6 .6 did occur about 2.30 in the morning, my time. Uh, originally, this came in as an another seven pointer. Goodness. Lots of fives, lots of sixes. Let's take a look at the total coverage here and see what we got. We have to go back for the last, got to go back the last seven days to see all the earthquakes that have been taking place here. Uh, including the big one yesterday, that 7.6 that shook things up out here and did trigger a tsunami statement there for a little bit. Uh, it did kick up some of the buoys out here in the uh, Pacific and uh, around the Mariana Islands, but it was a very small adjustment. So we're looking at 100, yeah, let's zoom in, 117 earthquakes uh, in the last couple days following uh, this event at 7.6. Here is the total numbers. Uh, up here, 117. Biggest one so far, 7.6. We've seen a large 6.6 this morning. That's been the largest aftershock here following that main event. I'm hoping this is a main event. Uh, we'll continue to watch this. Uh, we're going to look at historical data and see what we got here. A lot of folks asking if maybe there's something bigger brewing out here in this region. So let's go ahead and check it out real quick. We're going to go uh, 7.0 and above. And we're just going to... Do a little trip back into time. I know it doesn't cover all the way to the year 1000. That was weird. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> Ghost in the house again. 
Uh, yeah, this is going to be custom time. I'm going to draw a little square. What if I don't want to draw a rectangle? What if I want to draw a square over here across the Philippines area? Now, the Philippines Trench, obviously a major subduction zone region that does see some large damaging earthquakes. Uh, is the 7.6 about as big as they get? Well, let's go ahead and look at this area here, just specifically around the Philippines and see what we have uh, for earthquake activity. <clears throat> So looking at the largest magnitudes here, they can get into the 8 range, up to an 8.3 was recorded back in 1918. Uh, that was 20 kilometers deep here, just outside of the earthquake that we seen um, yesterday, that 7.6 that we seen. Uh, literally a little bit further to the south here, about 100 miles or so, we seen that 8.3. But that's not the only 8-pointer. A little bit closer to yesterday's event, we did see an 8.1 back in 1924. Uh, 1972 showed us an 8.0 within the same vicinity. Uh, 7.9 as well, and then of course so on it goes down. But the potential for larger scale movement is there. Now whether it's going to happen, uh, if we're going to see a larger event, it's possible. This kind of has the uh, similar... Uh, aspects as what we've seen up here across the Japan Trench area back in 2011. We've seen some sixes and then seen like an upper seven and they thought that was the big one. And then about a day later, they had that nine pointer. So a lot of earthquake activity going on. I think the longer that we continue to see uh, this earthquake activity out here in the Philippines uh, continue to ramp up like this, the possibility is there that we could see something larger than yesterday's 7.6. So that's a lot of earthquake activity just in the last 24 hours here. Again, the latest one of 5.1, that's the USGS model. EMSC over here was showing, uh, I think it was a 3.5 if I remember right, just about the time I started the video. So uh, we'll continue to watch that, but I think as time goes by, uh, if this continues to mellow down, the less likely that we'll see a larger earthquake, but it's just good to be prepared. 6.6 uh, .6 coming in. It's common, right? It's common following a large 7-pointer, a uh, 7.6 to be exact. So aftershocks can be large, but there's always that little percentage here that we may see something bigger. And it's been about 100 years or so since we had uh, some of those uh, low-grade 8-pointers out here. We have not seen uh, a lot of migration here following this earthquake activity. And migration, I mean by uh, plate displacement, uh, maybe a momentum or transfer of pressure in a certain area. Uh, it looks like for the most part, uh, it's remained around the Philippines here. Let me see what these two earthquakes are. These are from yesterday. Older movement quakes here. One earthquake uh, yesterday late afternoon near the Banda Sea. So yeah, not a whole lot of migration following all this movement. A lot of times we'll see a larger earthquake take place along the plate boundary or within a vicinity of a plate boundary and we'll see that adjustment that larger scale momentum or at least uptick in momentum um, in certain regions but we're just not seeing it right now it's all confined here to the philippines so just be on guard and stay safe out there uh, because uh the next couple days or at least the next 24 hours or so i think we need to watch this pretty closely uh, we did see some movement down into the New Zealand area overnight. Looks like some threes rocking and rolling down there. Nothing from the USGS map. We got one more deep earthquake out here from, um, <clears throat> that was uh, yesterday. So technically, oh goodness, technically we haven't really seen too much activity stirring up back here into the Tonga uh, Trench area. Let me check out New Zealand here real quick, see what we have. The site, uh, there's a couple different sites you can go to. Timothy, one of our moderators here, appreciate it. Timothy has his own site uh, that he keeps tabs on a lot of earthquake activity. It's called uh, New Zealand Quakes, uh, right here. Dot com, I believe, is the site. It's got a lot of cool different stuff on here. And I uh, appreciate the shout out there for the Earthmaster. A lot of uh, different... Uh, stuff out here in terms of earthquake activity for new zealand but not only new zealand but for the world in general all right let me go back here to the geonet servers 2.7 here on north island about four minutes ago uh, and over the last few hours we did see some twos and threes it looks like uh, stirring up mainly in the north island area i'm not for sure if we've had anything uh, kicking up down south here in the south island region 
Uh, there's some of that earthquake activity here over the last 24 hours, mostly twos and a couple threes in there. Nothing big time brewing yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, South Island looks actually, actually pretty quiet. I'm not seeing a whole lot of movement out here. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is earthquake activity out here on this map or not. It doesn't look like it. It could be. These could be very small earthquakes uh, situated very close to this uh, seismograph station. But for the most part, looking at these graphs here, South Island pretty quiet. A little bit of movement up around North Island that we'll continue to watch. And uh, right now, I just think we got to pay attention out there around the Philippines area. It's pretty important um, because a bigger earthquake could obviously have that tsunami potential. All right, the big island of Hawaii, 1.7 out here in Pahala or outside of Pahala area. Pretty shallow. Get a little bit of earthquake activity up here around the crater region, Lava Lake area of the Kilauea Volcano. So let's go see what's going on at the uh, hazard notification system. The USGS puts out daily updates on active volcanoes. And uh, this update is put out today. The volcano is currently not erupting. And uh, low levels of seismicity continue in the southwest rift zone, summit, and upper east rift zone. So things are just kind of as is they look like. Uh, let's check out some tilt meters, see what's going on out here for ourselves. Uh, Kilauea Volcano. This is their little instrument site here. kind of gives you uh, some pretty cool options to pick between things. You know, GPS, gas emissions, infrasound, uh, seismometer, uh, all sorts of stuff out here. The one I'm after is the tilt meters. It looks like we are going back down as expected. And I say as expected because the trend here, the general trend, uh, if we were to go back the last couple months here, and I'm not for sure how to show a maybe a 90-day period here. I couldn't find one on the USGS site. They just have this 30-day one. This is a summit meter or summit tilt meter. Uh, over the past couple months, we've seen at least a few days of inflation followed by a day, maybe two days of deflation event. And then it's always been followed up by an inflation event. But this one here, this last one that we've had, lasted longer and was higher in terms of the inflation rate than any other previous uh, inflation level on the graph. And it, it go back the last two months. And if you go back the last five years, this was at the highest. It's been since the 2018 eruption here at Kilauea Volcano. Uh, so I expect this, if we, if we look at trends here, the trend tells us that we should see the next two days here potentially continue to decline, level out before another potential uptick, uh, maybe even higher than this one that we've seen. A look at uh, webcam out here shows, obviously, that is not lava right here. I believe that's the direction of the sun. Kind of looks a little red or orange. Uh, but this is uh, some colder weather coming in up there. I know Mauna Loa had some snow. Uh, Kilauea Volcano, you know, not quite as high, but it does get some colder temperatures. And when there's, moist out, when there's moisture outside, well, all this volcanic gas and the heat that is still below this area of Lava Lake creates these dramatic-looking condens condensated clouds. These are basically water vapor, right? That's how clouds form, just like... Uh, if you come home from work and your house is cold and you decide to take a hot shower, right? You steam up your hot shower and your whole bathroom within a matter of seconds. That's condensation. So yes, there is volcanic gases seeping out here through the cracks. Obviously, um, we know magma is well below, not well below the surface, but just below the subsurface here. And it's, uh, it's swelling. It's definitely continuing to build up uh, at the summit region and just south here into the... Uh, into this little rift zone. So we're continuing to watch that. We'll report back on any major changes should they become available. Iceland, uh, let's see what's going on over here. Another volcano, but a different type scenario. Not a hot spot, but it's a uh, rift zone out here. Well, they haven't put out an update in uh, since the first. Goodness. So things must be calming down here. Uh, otherwise, they would definitely be uh, putting out some type of update. Go ahead and check out the earthquake activity for ourselves. You know, this was the least likely scenario that this would just continue for a little bit and then die off. They were 100% certain that this was going to break through the surface. And I believe it almost did. We've seen some incredibly high inflation rates out here 
in this area a lot of uplift and then it just kind of mellowed out. Uh, last 12 hours of earthquake activity, about 38 around the Hagafell area uh, and east of the Slingarfell region, uh, which they believe when it does erupt, if it does now, the question is if, uh, this will be the area of the eruption or fissure opening up, but um, it doesn't look like it. I mean, I'm, I'm leaning more towards now that uh, this may not even happen. Uh, there was definitely some damage out here due to due to the uh, inflation and the subsequent deflation, the subsidence, uh, kind of messed up some roads out here, and I'm sure some pipes and whatnot underground. How much? Uncertain, but uh, I definitely got uh, some work cut out for them if this decides to just, you know, go away completely. It's not done yet. The solidification process of the magma below, according to these folks, take uh, several months. You know, obviously you got a layer of rock above that magma that uh, it acts kind of as a, a uh, insulator. And that could uh, keep that magma pretty warm down there. But unless we see a further influx of magma from deeper levels below, then we won't see an eruption out here. All right, let's get back to earthquake activity. We have noticed all this activity out in the Western Pacific and uh, over here around the Philippines a relief of earthquake activity out here in California. And I kind of mentioned that, right? I said we need to watch for some larger scale movement out here to see California back off in terms of earthquake activity. And sure enough, we've seen it. Uh, it lasted. There was a little bit of earthquake activity. It kind of kicked up here yesterday. Uh, starting to think maybe that didn't relieve the West Coast. But uh, in general, California has dropped off significantly uh, following all this movement out here in the uh, Western Pacific. And it makes sense, right? The general plate stress out here of the Pacific plate moves to the West Northwest, everything else kind of following it, following behind it. So I believe there that things uh, are temporarily, temporarily um, in the relief stage here for California right now. I mean, look at this 2.5 map and above nothing down there in Southern Cal. One lonesome earthquake here from yesterday. That's a 3.4. But uh, everything else, small microquake activity here. No major swarms. A little bit of movement down here in the Mexicali area. We got about 10 earthquakes or so near the Octello, California region. Uh, but these are all generally small. Uh, most of them look like they were from yesterday. We did have a couple after midnight in the low uh, microquake range. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on up here, but uh, let's go double check it because I I like to keep tabs on super volcanoes. And of course, this is, a well, uh, the closest super volcano to me would be the one down in Southern California, Long Valley super volcano. But this is the one that would probably create uh, a little bit of harsh, harsher conditions out here on this planet should it decide to blow. But I see no signs of it. Even even any type of unrest whatsoever out here in terms of earthquake activity, volcanic activity. Right now, Yellowstone is very quiet. There's a couple small spikes there that did show up on a couple stations up here around Norris Junction, Maple Creek, Holmes Hill. But that's about it. The rest of the country, some oil fields getting hit out here in Texas. Surprise, surprise. And uh, one little earthquake out here in the New Madrid seismic zone from yesterday. Looks like things have kind of tapered off here in the Puerto Rico trench area as well, right? Remember, everything is kind of moving. Uh, certain plates out here move in a certain direction. North American plate kind of like... it. Uh, I didn't pull up my uh, my little image here. I'll have to bring that up later. But a lot of what takes place here across the Western Pacific uh, plays a major role on the plates over here across the east, uh, the eastern edge of the Pacific plate and... Uh, the adjacent plates over here got one earthquake down in the south sandwich trench it looks like a 5.1 uh, within the last hour it looks like uh, south america region a couple fours coming in here uh, some from yesterday some from today nothing big going on there uh, and there's that activity here in the puerto rico trench region it looks like a couple this morning some threes even a 4.1 in the dominican republic area but this is a Puerto Rico trench, and this is definitely a key area to watch in terms of potential larger scale movement. Alaska, well, they did see that five-pointer up here a 
a couple days ago. Doesn't look like uh, too much activity is hopping up here now. Look at the 2.5 map and above. Shows one earthquake here outside of Denali. Uh, that's along the plate boundary here, though. A little 2.9. Pretty deep, though. 127 kilometers deep. That five-pointer that kicked up here in the last uh, couple days, that was pretty deep as well. 100 kilometers deep. So definitely something stirring up underneath this area. Uh, and that may... Uh, Maybe, I don't know if it's volcanic or maybe it's related just to the subduction zone levels out here itself. Cascadia up here, or down here I should say, not a whole lot going on. Uh, the trimmer count last night, Cascadia trimmer was zero, zip zero. And it's it's been awfully low here, folks, since about October of last year. We did see a couple somewhat elevated trimmer level events back in April and May, but since then we've been awfully quiet uh, and I'm not 100% certain what that means um, because we uh, kind of study in all this trimmer activity. Hopefully, maybe be able to predict the next mega quake out here along the Cascadia by looking at these trimmer events. I, give, I, I believe it gives us a good key indicator of um, you know what to look for prior to the next big one out here because um, it really ramped up here for... A couple years, we were seeing elevated trimmer amounts uh, like every six months or so, every five months. And we're talking about, you know, almost over a thousand a day uh, back then. Uh, and now it's just, it's awfully quiet. So just kind of watch that. All right, uh, the rest of the globe here. See what we got out in the area of, um, well, we got a couple earthquakes out here along the plate boundary it looks like a 4.8 coming into that region did the usgs pick up on that uh let's see 4.8 whoa did they just have another one out there oh man they just had another seven pointer here guys another seven pointer here in the philippines goodness i just seen that circle i was like what I wasn't looking at the seismograph stations here, but this thing just kicked in. Another seven-pointer coming in uh, to this area of the Philippines. Goodness. 10 kilometers deep still within the same area. Now, this would make it uh, the largest aftershock uh, for a 7.0. Uh, looks like there may be a tsunami statement. No warning or threat, but... Uh, they did put out a little update here, it looks like. this Again, this earthquake coming in within the last couple minutes here. Um, so that's going to be this one right here. Um, no tsunami threat. Goodness, but that look at that. Holy smokes. It's possible, folks, and I said it, right? We could be looking at something maybe a little bit bigger brewing in this area. It has been reviewed, so activity continuing. I'm going to jump off here, folks, and look into a few things. We'll catch you guys back here uh, a little bit later on throughout the day.